Are we actually recording yet? Uh, yeah. yeah, sure, why not? Good. How you guys doing? Good. Uh, I apologize. Uh, the original talk was supposed to be given by Joe Gray. He had a family emergency, so I'm kind of stepping in. Um, I submitted a similar talk, but mine's way better. <laughs> so um, obviously, you know, my the the subject of the talk is OSINT, uh, specifically OSINT, um, and how we're using OSINT to go through and build attack vectors or what we can leverage in regards to um, attack side. Uh, what you can do in regards to defending to leverage OSINT to help with, um, maybe some personal protection in regards to using OSINT tools. Uh, so it is OSINT and your world. It is a love story. Aww. So I have a couple questions, and there's a little bit of audience participation. Uh, if you guys want to, that's fine. If not, then, you know, just fuck off. Um, <laughs> What? I mean, like deep down, I'm hurt, but no. Uh, who, who, who is who's here for the first time? This is their first conference. That's amazing, awesome. Uh, Circle CityCon last year was my first conference. I actually started and I did security as a red shirt. Um, and again, I was not planning on speaking; otherwise, I would have wore something better. So I've been working all day in red shirt stuff uh, for security. So. I came back and did this again because I really like this conference. So uh, I think that you will get a lot of benefit out of being here. It's a smaller conference. It's easy to go through and talk to people. If you have questions, you can find them anywhere. Um, so it's good. Who has actually heard or uses uh, OSINT? That's pretty fair. Okay. Um, so again, my name is Michael James. I don't know what the actual title on the uh, the page there for all the talks said. Originally, this was kind of developed as a talk uh, in regards to my former life as working in kind of the finance stuff. Um, I was uh, not really into the InfoSec sphere. Um, I'm really still not. Um, I'm kind of an independent researcher right now looking for a home, uh, but this is who I am. Um, I live out in Kansas City, so the local group out in Kansas City is SecKC. SecKC for life, son. No, it isn't. Um, but Ginsburg5150, that's my Twitter handle. You guys can find me out there. I, I post stuff in regards to OSINT, SE, lockpick, stuff like that. So if you guys are into that, you know, follow me. It's good stuff. Um, so before, again, when I was, when I was back in the early 2000s up till about 2012, I was working actually, uh, as, uh, a credit rep for financial firms. I did collection and I did repo. So I don't know if we have any wrestling fans in here, but that's the repo man from, I think it's WWE. Um, and before I even know what OSINT was, I was actually doing skip tracing and other forms of, of, of intelligence gathering uh, to go through and to work on collections and other things like that. If I noticed on a Facebook post that you had a brand new 42-inch TV and you weren't paying me my debt, I was wondering why. So I'd ask you questions in regards to that and be like, how, how did you even know that I... Okay. So as OSINT kind of developed, as social media kind of came up, as other tools were developed, I kind of got very heavy into the space because research is really something that I, I, I truly enjoy. Um, and so that's what I'm doing with it now. I work, uh, like I said, independently uh, with some people that do some fact-checking. Um, we do a lot with kind of development of tools in regards to OSINT. And a lot of the stuff I'm going to show you guys today is tools that have been useful over the last year. Uh, I have some of my own tool development stuff, but it's not to the point where I'm actually ready to take criticism for it yet. So we'll see how that goes. So what is OSINT? Um, open source is the OS. Uh, INT is kind of intelligence or intel. Um, basically anything that we can get our hands on for free. There's no closed loop system. You're not paying for any information. That does include data breaches, dark web information. That includes anything public record. Uh, anything that you have freely accessible to you, which is a shit ton. Um, it's actually very easy to go through and get a lot of information if you know where to look. There's a lot of the sites that you can go through and if you're looking for someone's home address, phone number, social security number, they're gonna go through and try to charge you with a little extra effort and the right places to go through and look. Unfortunately, it's very easy to go through and get that information. Um, so some of the questions that we're gonna go over uh, in, the, in the beginning of this is, how do we determine what we're going to be used and when? Uh, what we're gonna be focusing on, and I thought you said this is a love story. 
And that is actually kind of true because I do love OSINT. I love the real world application of where the meat space and where the cyberspace, I know I have to take a drink, uh, kind of meet. Um, Chris Nickerson, um, who did a podcast called Exotic Liability, he's the founder of well, maybe not B-Sides, but he was very instrumental in B-Sides. He was also uh, the founder of uh, Loris Group out in Denver. Uh, said, okay, great, you guys can pop boxes, you guys can rain shells all day long. That's great. What did you get out of it? If there's no actionable information, if there's no HIPAA information, if there's no credit card information, if there's no damaging information or whatever, then you've just done nothing. You've wasted your time, and there's no real-world application that's going to go through and make anybody change any of the behaviors that they have. OSINT is actually where that stuff meets up. And I hopefully will demonstrate a little bit of that today. And I forgot to start the clock, so I apologize. I'm just going to keep talking. So some of the real world applications of OSINT. Um, as more of the social media, social media, as more of the um, IoT devices, as more of the smartphones, everything else becomes integrated, uh, there is a real, real gray area between data mining in data science versus uh, OSINT. OSINT used to be very, very specific in regards to its targeting. Uh, data mining used to be very, very broad in regards to groups of information that it could go through and use for marketers. Marketers and OSINT, they're both kind of on the dark side sometimes, but at the same time they use some of the similar tools to go through and allocate information. So you'll see those lines as we move forward kind of get very, very blurred. Uh, penetration testing and vulnerability assessments. Uh, this is where a lot of people has, have heard of OSINT. Uh, you know, you got to get your targets and all that. Some of the stuff with digital forensics and uh, information, or excuse me, uh, incident response threat hunting, if you want to go through and use that popularized information. Uh, malware analysis. I know a lot of the stuff is being... Code snippets are being deposited to Vulnhub and other places where you can go through and actually take the signatures and you can cross it back and make sure that if you are on the trail of something that's affected your network, uh, there's already somebody else who's probably been out there who's had that similar thing. So, you know, signatures in regards to the code snippets, how they use it, where they go through and do their calls to, it can all lead back to a physical location to where you can actually affect change in regards to these people or these, 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 uh, threat actors, uh, trying to get into your network. Uh, governments, medical, business, the, the CDC uses OSINT all the time to go through and start uh, campaigns or outbreaks, uh, working it backwards to go through and kind of find out where it started. Uh, governments has been using OSINT since before wars were invented. Uh, it's, it's not so much in regards to the, the human, uh, like the human intelligence factor, but even just what they publish in regards to foreign papers and stuff uh, is actually a form of OSINT. So they've been using that for, for generations. Uh, businesses are now getting into actually leveraging OSINT and open source intelligence stuff. Uh, again, not through closed systems like espionage or anything else like that, but just what the daily re earnings reports are and, and, and what the competition is doing, what they're registering in regards to trademarks and things like that. Uh, journalists and fact checkers should be using this a lot more. Um, they're not, but they, they have the ability to. Uh, but I know that the, even even some of the people who are here who work in the tech industry and report uh, specifically stuff, you know, Brian Krebs and, and some of the other people uh, use OSINT daily to go through and kind of fact check their own stuff and make sure it's, it's verified. Uh, you can use OSINT in regards to your own personal security. Um, I don't. And we'll get to a slide later, but if you don't know what your information is out there, if you don't know what your actual tax surface personally is, then it's very difficult for you to go through and mitigate that threat. Um, and in regards to career development, you can actually go through and use OSINT to kind of position yourself in regards to a company that uh, you want to work for. You want to go through and do a little bit of uh, information gathering in regards to that. What's their financials look like? How is their hiring trends? Um, you know, cold calling in regards to some of the stuff that uh, HR may be interested in. It may be beneficial for you to go through and do that. And uh, I have talked to several social engineers that say, if you don't do this on your own job assessment stuff, whatever, then you're losing out. Um, they say that it's almost, at that point, a, uh, a requirement that you do your OSINT background search in regards to any job, any position, anything, such as you would if you were going to move into a new neighborhood. If you're going to move your kids into an area, you would probably check uh, city data to go through and see what sexual predators are around there. You would go through and see what the school is around there and how the school's been working. It, it's no different in regards to all that stuff that you use to protect your family, 
Um, it's just uh, another level of education that you can help yourself with career development. So defenders like to go through and protect the network. Uh, we know that without using some of the OSINT and just brute forcing the attack and stuff, that blue teams can go through and set honeypots to go through and actually uh, ensnare some of the people, make sure that they know who's snooping around their networks. And you know, just because you throw 15 guys at a problem doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go through and be ineffective. So blue team has their own applications in regards to open source intelligence as well. Where we get into kind of the dark side of OSINT is the attackers have no scope. They do not care. If your information is on there or if they can go through and breach your system, closed loop or open loop, whatever source it is, they're going to leverage any piece of information in regards to corporate, in regards to personal, any sort of attack, uh, attack surface that they can go through and get. So as, a, as an attacker, we want to go through and replicate as much of that as possible or as much as people will let us do so that we can go through and better defend against that stuff and make sure that we know if there is a breach or if there is someone who's trying to compromise you via social media or if it's a phishing, phishing, if it's, you know, identity theft, uh, if, you're, if your employees are posting stuff on Instagram, which is going to get awesome later, um, that you, you have the ability to go through and put countermeasures in place to go through and protect your own infrastructure as a corporate group and your own personality or your own personal space as, as an individual in your family. Uh, and attackers love to win. So we are going to go through and leverage everything we can to go through and try to either gain that, uh, that, that, uh, rapport with you. Uh, at that point, we're going to go through and use this in regards to pretexting. We're going to go through and build campaigns, uh, at, at, with, with all this information here. Um, I just love hackers. It's a good movie. Sorry. So where the marriage of social engineering and OSINT come together is really uh, kind of one of the most um, one of the most damning things that can can be around. You can go through and fingerprint a, a lot of people's networks and stuff like that, but without using the actual the human element in regards to the attack surface. In my opinion, uh, you're really missing out. Um, we do have a long way to go to secure our own selves online. Uh, and, you know, just like this type of thing here, with, you know, what, what, what is your hacker name? The color of your t-shirt and the uh, password to your email. No big deal, right? I just put that in my Facebook account. It's awesome. So why are we using Intel for social media, or excuse me, for, uh, for social engineering? Uh, again, it broadens the attack surface that we have the ability to go through and use against any sort of target, be it corporate or personal. Uh, sort of information is best to use depending upon what you're actually looking to do. Um, if you're trying to get uh, build a rapport with somebody who is inside a corporation so you can get into the building on a physical penetration test, then obviously knowing what their likes and dislikes are, you know, following them and making sure that you uh, can can speak very fluently in their language is, is very, very helpful. And again, we want to understand the attack so that we know how to defend. So what can we learn from the attack? If we're going to continue the attack against multiple targets, there's data that we can go through and use and process to go through and help with future ventures. So this is just some of the stuff that I found in regards to some of the attack vectors. Uh, and this is all online in Google search. I didn't go through and do any deep dive. It wasn't on any, any cracker forums for, for carding and stuff like that. Literally, this was posted on Twitter. And if you'll notice, it's a social security number and a Visa uh, uh, credit card there. And the uh, the person who put all this stuff up says, you know, any any woman who wants to go through and get a man needs these two pieces of information or whatever to to know if they can support them. And that's baller. Good on you, man. That's uh, that's awesome. But uh, putting that stuff social media, um, you know, it, it it not only opens you up for dumbass of the we uh, year award, uh, but you know, just off the bat, wherever there's an identity theft risk. So let's take just the identity theft risk away. What other vectors from just this one picture, if you were a social engineer or if you're a bad guy, what other vectors could you go through and attack from just by this? Anybody? And I'm, I'm, I'm honestly asking. So if you guys have a, a, a response, go ahead and shout it out. Email, PayPal credentials. Absolutely. So pretexting, there's a problem with your credit card. You're using yourself as a trusted source. I'm from Visa. We had a report of somebody using this stuff, getting even further in regards to that stuff. Anything else? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, identity theft, like I said, you, 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 you can actually go through and do a lot of damning things with this stuff, whatever. But even if for some reason some other black hat got to this first and you're able to go through and still use this information, there's multiple vectors just from this one piece of information that you got off Twitter, which is a freely public site. So this will, this will be kind of some of the stuff that we go over next is just some of the attack vectors. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll challenge you to go through and kind of see what else you could go through and do with this information, even, even just these pictures, if you were going to kind of build a campaign against. So I got this off Instagram and I love Instagram. Instagram is, is one of those things where it, it rewards you for posting unique information. And at that point, it's all visual. So even the dum-dums in here that don't want to go through and do anything, I'm sorry, uh, you can go through and just use the information that's right there. So aside from just putting up that we now know who she is, what she does, when she started all that, what other attack vectors could we plan against this? You can make your own badge, so impersonation attacks. We could go through and, and, and walk into anywhere that they're supposed to go through and be in the city. We could walk into their office. And once we have the credentials, because it's right there, we don't have to go through and do any guesswork in regards to this stuff. We, we have an impersonation attack. Anything else? So, yeah, so she has masters. We know she works. We know what, we know what her, her, her designated title and all that stuff is. So, uh, identity theft again, pretexting in regards to all this other stuff, uh, student loans, uh, fake collection calls. So all that stuff would go through and apply to her because there's obviously enough interest and money for her to go through and pursue this that, uh, that she's willing to put on Instagram. Yeah. And that, that, that was, um, one of the things I was going to talk about. We know that she's an RN, so we know that she's already in the medical field. Medical data is hot right now with hackers. For some reason, where we're getting all that HIPAA information and just selling all that on the black market, whatever, it's, it's the bee's knees. Don't know why, but we'll find out later when they actually go through and use this stuff because it is profitable. Credit cards, psh, that's 2015. We got medical data now. We know what your blood type is, yo. But that, that brings up an interesting vector there because we know that she's in the medical field. We know she has access to go through and to be running medical searches. We know that if she is going to be looking at a medical investigation, be it, uh, I don't know, a coroner or be it a live investigation or something like that, we can go through and use her identity as an impersonation attack to go through and get other information about maybe spear phishing campaign stuff. Oh, we just got your test back results. Oh, it looks like you've got the AIDS. What? Uh, and what? No, I need you to go through and give me a call back as soon as possible. And then you just throw that person for a huge loop. While you're disrupting that person, you're also setting up another attack to go through and do something else. But it's the, it's the bait and switch. It's the, the duck and dive. I think this next one's really awesome. We'll see. It is really awesome. So you have uh, current Facebook security employees who like porn films. I know that I love my security guys to go through and watch porn at work all the time and then post on the Internet about it because that's awesome. Because they're hard at work. Sorry, it was bad. I knew I'd <laughs> Um So not only with this, oh, oh, let, me, let me ask you guys. What, what, what sort of attack platform, just, just being in security, just knowing that there is a common threat interest in regards to this stuff, what could we go through and assess in regards to attack platform? What, sexual harassment lawsuit? That's a, that's, that's a, that's good. Blackmail is good. Uh, I don't know that it would work in regards to a lot of the stuff because some people are like, hey, it's porn, whatever. But blackmail against maybe the person because they're a security person, that may work. Uh, what were you going to say? Sorry? Watering hole attacks. So you have common interests in regards to this law of stuff. You want to strike up a conversation with somebody. Hey, hey, did you see, you know, I'm not going to try to name porno names and stuff. Because <laughs> even if I made it up, it's probably real. Um... So yeah, so so commonality. We we like to go through and share things. We love to share things. Bring it back to this love story. Everyone loves to go through and share all this information here, which is great until we go through the actual process of finding out what's the dumb information and what's the smart information to go through and put on there. But as an OSINT investigator or an, as an SE or as a bad guy, this is gold because that guy's face wasn't blurred out before. So I can use that to go through and track him down. I know he's got a wife and three kids. Blackmail's back on the table. 
I know that he's been working at Facebook security for 17 years or something. This may be a little bit more embarrassing. Is he running it over SSH to get, go through and get outside of the scanners? You know, you can dive a lot deeper when you get that stuff, which is kind of the core principle in regards to OSINT. The more intelligence that you have, the more constants that you do, the more information that you've gathered gives you a clearer idea about multiple type vectors. Because not everyone's going to go through and work. But enough of them will go through and have a likelihood of success that if you have multiple strands, it's very, very likely you'll get through. This is the... So how many people are on Twitter in here? Almost everybody? That's okay. So have you guys seen the, uh, the debit card Twitter accounts where people will post their debit cards and stuff like that on there? So this is, uh, finally got my debit card in the mail. Love the blue. The next comment is, uh, the back of my car is 388. Why is everyone asking me that? So again, I mean, just from this one post, we can go through and we can say, uh, you know, that obviously there, uh, there's an identity theft, there, there's, there's a bank fraud type situation that we can go through and definitely pray from. Um, you know, we, we definitely want to talk to you about your, uh, your payment history and are, are you verified on Twitter? Uh, so what other, what other, uh, attack vectors could we go through and kind of glean from this? Some of the stuff is repeating, but I'm, I'm, I'm asking to see how, how creative we can kind of be with some of this stuff. Because a, a lot of stuff is the same attack over and over because it's the same information, but, anybody? Name? You got that? So identity theft, stuff like that? You could try to get her butt on a watch list, I guess. That could, that could work. Uh, but an impersonation attack, obviously you have this information. Um, even going from the flip side, as if you call as a trusted vendor, hey, this is Michael James from Visa. We noticed that there's some uh, regular activity on there. Did you, did you, did you see anything on there? Oh yeah, I put my stuff on Twitter and everybody, uh, stole my card. Oh, that's horrible. Let's see what we can do to help you. What's your password? It, it sounds silly. To us, it sounds silly. To, to the common man, it sounds silly. Uh, when, when I'm taking information security tests for the, the company that I work for now, which is still in FinTech, um, I would never go through and do all this information. Uh, but it happens every single day. So what are the tools that assist in the collection of data? We really need to go through and, like I said, I, I'm looking at it more from an attack side vector um, because it helps me to go through and understand the problem when I know how to break it. Uh, other people don't want to go through and work that way. They want to defend. They want to grow roots. They want to stick down in the mud and fight all you hackers. Uh, but what are we hunting? What are we doing? What are, are, are we looking at what's vulnerable in regards to the corporate structure, the personal structure, the other stuff? Are we looking to go through and see where the weak links are in our, our, our network, our infrastructure, our BOID, you know, bring your own device stuff? Uh, do we have segregated Wi-Fi's so that we know if one person is bringing a, uh, a bring your own device to work and it gets infected with something and it's on all of our infrastructure Wi-Fi, is that segregated? Do we have the ability to go through and push that differently? Um, setting up what the goal is. Every, every campaign that you run, whether this is a personal uh, OSINT kind of research, whether this is attack, whether this is defend, we want to know what the goal is. We want to go through and obviously increase our security. We want to increase our, our we want to decrease our attack surface. But there should be a measurable amount that we can go through and do. So we need to see like that. Uh, and again, I don't have time to stalk everybody. I would love to stalk all of you individually and give you the love that you need, but I don't have time. So what tools can I use to go through and help me with that stuff? Let's talk about OSINT. This is the OSINT framework. Uh, this came out, I think, last year. There's a gentleman named Justin Nordeen, um, who is a, a super, super nice, super awesome guy. He started to kind of get all these bookmarks together in regards to a lot of, and it's kind of difficult to tell because it is like a mind map type thing. Um, you know, what, what, are, what are you looking for? I mean, this gets into... Uh, the malware analysis, this gets into the username checks, this gets into um, a lot of the public records that's available. So you, you would go through and it's osintframework.com. You click on, let's say, username. Let's say you're trying to go through and find something and you've got a Twitter handle, but you want to know more about them. So you're going to start to drill down. So you go to name checker or something else like that and see what are the sites they're on. See what other sites have been registered under that handle and you can get a clear picture for that one handle in regards to where other attack sites are or where other, in, other information gathering stuff is. 
If you know that they're on Fiverr, you can contact them there on Fiverr and go say, hey, I've got a job for you to go through and do this. At least you're opening a line of communication. If they're on Facebook, then you know that they're on Facebook, and that's just all the information right there. Just go home. You're done drunk. Um, this is an awesome tool. Uh, it is not automated at this point, but with this mind map and this site, uh, it's very easy to go through and click through and do stuff individually. Um, Justin does have all of his bookmarks as well for all the sites where you can go through and download those and you can integrate those into whatever else you want to go through and do, uh, API callouts and all that stuff. So you can try to go through and automate that, which we'll get to a little bit later. So yeah, the OSINT framework is, uh, is, is a good tool and it's, it's a lot of fun to go through and see what you can find. Um, he updates it pretty regularly. Uh, I know he does a big push in February. It's the 28 days of OSINT where he goes through and finds all the dead links, uh, pulls all that stuff out and he, Continues to update it as well. Uh, he's very vocal on Twitter as well. I saw you. I'll get to you in a second. Uh, so if you have a question, he's one of those guys that where if you ask him something, he will definitely try to get back with you. What's going on? Why? Why is it? Is it? Is it? Why? Yes. Just do an OSINT on me. You want to do my hide my ass and all the, uh, all that other stuff up there? Yeah. What? No. Don't. Sorry. Uh, I think it's uh, Jay Nordine. N O R D I N E. Um, and he's one of the guys with Lock Fail, F A L E. He does a lot of, uh, um, Lock Sport and stuff like that. He was actually, he has a couple of videos from, uh, Carolina Con from 12 and 13. Super, super nice guy. Um, never met him personally, but I've interacted with him several times and we're trying to get together where everyone is. So maybe Derby Con? I don't know. If you're out there and you're listening to this, you know, I'll buy you a drink. Uh, This is another tool. Uh, a lot of people will look at this and be like, oh, this is just something I put my email in and see how many breaches come across. This actually is a tool on both sides, on the personal or on all three sides, I should say. Uh, this is started by Troy Hunt. Uh, how many people have heard of this? Have I been pwned.com? About half, a little bit more than half. It's good. Um, you can enter the email or the username, and he has a database of where He's kind of collected some of the information that's been in the major breaches. <clears throat> so if you were in the Target breach, if you were in the uh, Home Depot breach, if you were in the Sony uh, breach for um, the Sony PlayStation accounts, stuff like that, um, your gamer tag, your username, stuff like that, it's good to know as a person what you have been exposed to. It's good as an attacker to run all of your emails through there and say, okay, now you've been pwned on this side or whatever, I can call you as a trusted person or whatever and say, hey, I'm getting you know, some weird emails from this address. Did, did you get, did you get hacked, bro? So, uh, and uh, as a, as a, as a corporation as well, whatever, running your own email, your own email instances through this to go through and see if some of your sales guys or some of your marketing people or some of your customer service people, if they've been putting this on applications to go through and get free pizza from somebody, uh, maybe this gets trapped and it gets pwned on something else, whatever. Because a lot of people nowadays don't understand the blur or the distinction between your home email and your home life on the internet and your work email and your work stuff like that, you know. It's easy because you're at work, you just want to check some stuff online. Well, that's that's more of an attack service for all of the uh, those golden blue guys to to, uh, to defend against. <clears throat> Anybody heard of Michael Basil? A couple people in here. He is he is a he, this man is is, is extremely serious in regards to privacy uh, and intelligence. Uh, he does teach intelligence classes to the government to um, well I don't know what three letter agencies, but he's been involved in regards to this for a long time. Um, he is the man with no face because, as you can tell up here, all of his intel techniques, all of this stuff up here, this is his his, his Twitter avatar as well. It's it's him in his suit with no head. So he, you know he's 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 very difficult to go through and locate via facial recognition. Um, he actually came out, I think, in the beginning of this year with a Linux virtual machine that allows you to go through and do a lot of this test environment stuff for OSINT. Um, has XF data. Um, has a lot of uh, key pass, a lot of other just basic passive information that you can go through and gather, gather with this stuff. Um, I know a lot of us enjoy Linux because it gives us a lot more ability to kind of create. Um, this is a virtual machine, so you can run it in Windows if you've got VMware or something else like that. So it, it's not a dedicated thing. You've got to go through and parse or uh, open up a lot more 
space, but it is a resource out there. Um, also with Michael Basil, he has some amazing books uh, for privacy. Um, he tells you kind of how to get off of the internet in not so many words. Um, he also has some tools to go through and kind of automate some of these stuff in regards to the searches. So he's got, uh, he has some basically fill in the blank type stuff. If you want to fill in one thing, you're looking for a username, it's kind of like the name checker deal, but I don't think it's as clean. I don't think it works as well. It's, it's still a beautiful site. Uh, the forums are absolutely amazing, uh, in regards to social intelligence or social engineering, um, OSINT, privacy, things like that. Really taking that deep dive in regards to accessing burner phones or getting Android builds that are hardened so that you can go through and stop all this leakage of data. Uh, anything else that, that permeates in regards to the internet and that's accessible. He, he really is a, 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 a strong, strong person in that sense there. So yeah, um, inteltechniques.com is his stuff there. It's, it's well worth checking out. He's got a podcast too now. Um, and it's, it's fun. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, and they go through kind of a, I think weekly or bi-weekly rundown of emails and stuff like that where we're trying to help people get back into a privacy mode mindset and stop a lot of the data leakage and stuff. Um, using Proton Mail, making sure that you know um, from have I been pwned and all the other attack vector, all your services that, that may be personally affecting you. Um, Python is such a ubiquitous language in regards to InfoSec uh, that a lot of people have the ability to go through and pick it up over a weekend. Uh, you can you can do a lot with Python in regards to scripting. I know even as an attack side, uh, we have to go through and use Python to script certain things to go through and make sure that we're running scans against things. It just automates some of the stuff. And Justin Sykes, who runs the uh, Automating OSINTs uh, blog, is by far one of the sweetest guys uh, in InfoSec. He is super nice. He really likes to go through and help people out. Um, he does a lot with uh, Python and the automation of OSINTs. Um, he's very big in regards to the command line. He, for some reason, loves Wing IDE, but you know that that's his personal thing. Um, but he is one of those guys that if you jump to, to a conversation with him, he he will honestly try to help out anything that you have problems with. Uh, he's super responsive, and he also has uh, another tool that is specific for investigations. Um, myself, I've not used it. Well, excuse me, I, I don't own a license to go through and, and have it. I have played with it before. It is very, very helpful. It's called Hunchly. It's H-U-N-C-H dot L-Y. Um, it essentially, once it's running in your browser, has the ability to go through and capture every image that you're seeing, every every link, everything that you go to. So in regards to investigations, if you're going down that rabbit hole and you're like, oh, I clicked over here and then I went to this and now I got this and I found this piece of information, but you got to prove it. You got to show somebody if it's personal, corporate, whatever it is. You got to you got to show somebody to get back to it, and it's actually a repeatable attack vector. This will actually go through and show you all the steps that you made it to that spot. So it will document everything that you go through and do. You can add notes, you can add pictures, you can you, you can do a lot with it. It it does have a, a license fee, and it's a, it's well worth it. I think. Um, I'm just trying to wait for a sale. So we'll see how that works. Uh, but yeah, Justin Sykes and a lot of his information, even if you want to get into some of the war stories in regards to OSINT and how he's tracking people down and how he's verifying information, um, his blog is amazing. Uh, it's, it's really good. And he's done a lot of good stuff in our community as well. So this is a tool that's been out for a while. They just came out with an update. It's called EchoSec. E C H O S E C. Um, they have a pro or enterprise edition. It is a real time geo based uh, social media kind of feed. So you can go through and enter any location worldwide. You can enter certain hashes or, I mean, um, well, hashtags, stuff like that. And you can actually see in real time what other people are saying, uh, what the temperature of that, that climate is. Um, I know that. A couple years back, there was some problems around the St. Louis area in like Ferguson, Missouri, where some of the riots started happening. Uh, I think this was 2014. And I actually used this back then to go through and kind of see up to the minute what people were posting on Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, all that stuff. It's all integrated. The only 
so this this is actually the free edition. They do have like kind of like a community edition. It's a lot of fun to use. It is kind of flaky. You do have to go through and sign in to some of your own social media stuff so it has access so we can actually link up. Um, that kind of leads into a talk about using puppet accounts and stuff like that that I won't get into. But if you guys are interested in creating you know online personalities that you can you know, fill out this stuff that's not actually tied to your own real stuff, then maybe we talk later at the bar. Uh, but a lot of this stuff is kind of cool, and like I said, I, I got this last night, you know, my screenshots with all my stuff in there, Mr. Person, um, that, uh, you know, just for the Circle City Con, you know, first thing that came up whatever was obviously all the people doing talks and stuff like that, so real-time, uh, geo-based kind of information uh, just to go through and get, you know, if you've got a corporate event or if you're working for a company like Garmin and you want to go through and see what their headquarters, which are in Kansas City, that's out there with me, uh, you know, what they're doing, what their employees are doing. If I was going to go through and take a temperature of how their marketing department is going to be scheduling something, if there's a, a, a day where I can go through and do recon on site and I know that they're accepting people because they've got, you know, an open house or they're doing a 5K or they're doing anything that allows me to get in without any sort of extra work on my effort, yeah, done. So this is just another tool for the bag and stuff. And not a lot of people use this. And they, like I said, just kind of came out and redid EchoSec. Um, so it's it's fun to look into it, and it, it is kind of marketing driven. It's also infosec driven. So where those two worlds kind of meet, it's just intel gathering stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. So a lot like the um, OSINT framework, there is a collection of ungodly resources that um, an individual named Four Machiavelli has actually uh, put together. Um, all of these links and resources are available on GitHub, <clears throat> like I said, as bookmarks to go through and download. Um, they're also, they've been picked up by Michael Basil as well and put into the Intel techniques. So it's actually pretty well recognized as one of the leading repositories of uh, good live links to go through and do searches for, I mean, damn near anything. So. Just in regards to some of the headlines, uh, ju just the categories and stuff like that, I want to read some of that stuff here just from, from this GitHub page. Uh, so real estate, if you want to go through and check values of, of properties, see what's for sale, um, you know, last known person to go through and, and what they made in regards to that stuff. Stolen property, fact checking, uh, censorship, takedown, and copyright investigation stuff, uh, leaks, um, also uh, geospartial uh, research and mapping tools. So anything that you're looking to go through and do uh, that is outside of Google Map search or the 3D Google Map search, um, you know, like if you're looking for plane data or anything else like that, um, videos and other video tools, uh, live webcams and streams. I know a lot of us work with uh, Shodan and some of the other stuff. There's some alternative ones that he has in here, like Periscope and some of the other stuff that's really, really helpful. Audio streams, uh, image analysis, image search, not just like tiny eye, but like reverse searching and searching images. Um, and he's got a ton of stuff in here. Language tools, uh, web history and cached uh, websites. Uh, I know a lot of us use the uh, Wayback Machine, things like that. Uh, if you know, if for some reason that's not working or something, there's some, some other ones here. Uh, keyword discovery and re keyword, excuse me, discovery and research, uh, domain and IP research goes on and on and on. Job searching researches. So obviously, job searches may be a viable thing for like a um, if you're looking for someone's resume. A lot of people put really silly information in regards to the resume, uh, but that would work against a spear phishing attack. If you have your social security number on there, which they tell you never do, um, your your home address, your email, your telephone number, where you're working currently, what you've been doing, what what you know, what value you bring to that stuff. Um, company research, so a lot more than just kind of the uh, Dun & Bradstreet, the sick codes and stuff like that, if you're actually researching a corporate uh, target, um, so a little bit more than just like the SOS and stuff like that, the Secretary of State's office for that for that group. Uh, events, expert searches, so if for some reason uh, you wanted to look into a like phishing campaign or if you wanted to go through and try to find somebody that was a, a an expert in a particular area to go through and leverage their services and try to get a little bit more intel in regards to another attack or something like that. 
Uh, it, honestly, it goes on and on. Phone numbers, people investigation. It, these are all links, and these are all live links that you can do all this research in regards to. Um, arrest records, inmates, uh, username checks, Tumblr. Uh, there's some Russian stuff on here. Uh, Congregate, I think it is. Um, yeah, Pinterest, Instagram, Telegram. Uh, Telegram is getting a lot of interest because of ISIS. Uh, so anyone who was doing uh, attacks against ISIS or doing uh, intelligence recons versus Islamic State stuff, uh, the Telegram is a huge, huge market for them. Twitter and all the stuff in regards to Twitter is all different things that you can go through and do with geolocations for specific tweets. Um, if you're trying to go through and just pull a lot of the information for a specific person, Google, Facebook, real-time social media checks, just it goes on and on and on. And that's just this one gentleman and his collaborative effort to go through and help the OSINT community and stuff. So these are some of the other tools that I have been playing with and I really like. How are we doing on time? We good? Uh, now I have five minutes? I had to ask you? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> So, Secretary of State, uh, if you're doing something in regards to a corporate um, event, if you're looking it, on, on either side, I don't want to say red or blue because, you know, if this has taught me anything, it's not red team all the time. Um, so, if you are a corporation, you need to go through and see what the Secretary of State's office says for you. When you do your registration for your LLC, your LP, uh, your incorporation, whatever it is, you know, sometimes that stuff gets done five years ago and you forget who you put on there as a registered agent. It may be you. So at that point, however, I've got a direct phone number and access to you directly, and you own this business. Make sure that you're checking that stuff, or make sure as an attacker you're checking that stuff. Uh, Mapillary is a new uh, mapping system that is crowdsourced. Um, it came out, I think, a couple months ago, and it's kind of fun. At this point, you can go through and watch live streams of people that will, will drive up and down the street and it'll cache that information. Why this is good, why this is useful on an attacker side is because there is no, there's no, there's no blurry lines like there is with uh, Google Map. There's, there's no algorithm to go through and take away license plate numbers. You can see exactly what's on the house, the front of the house. You can see everything there. It's uncensored. So if you're doing an investigation or if you're doing an attack side stuff and you know that you're, your, your target has a Mitsubishi or something like that, and you can run that because you, you see it in the driveway, you know their license plate, you can go through and build an attack platform maybe very, uh, for a phishing scheme, whatever, where you're saying that, hey, there's a, there's a recall in your car. You know, if you don't call us, whatever, the tires are going to fall off. You know, something like that, however, gets some people's attention. Uh, Maltigo is amazing. I, I don't particularly like the community edition because it only allows you 12 searches per search. It only gives you 12 results. But um, Maltigo is amazing. Uh, MassMine is also another project that's uh, it's a mass social media mining tool. Um, I think it was originally developed for more of a marketing standpoint, but I think InfoSec kind of got a hold of it and said, hey, we could use this too. Uh, Spiderfoot is kind of a... Um, Spiderfoot is... A lot like Maltigo, it has some plug and play stuff. It is something that I'm playing with a lot more and I know of the, the developers. He's in a Slack channel that I'm in and he's a super, super helpful guy. Instagram again is my favorite thing to go through and troll now, to go through and search for stuff. Keywords are awesome. Um, and I get a lot of information because everyone loves to post all their stuff online now. Uh, stock scan. This is a very interesting tool for Facebook. Um, a lot of people think that all their information is private and if you don't set each individual picture to private, it may not matter because once you go through and you log the actual Facebook user's ID, it brings up all of their interests, all of their pictures, all of their contacts. So anything that's not directly set to private, it will go through and pull that. Uh, GeoTweet, same thing. It's uh, more for geo-identification of where that person was tweeting from. Uh, Xfil tools, how many people... How many people use metadata in regards to day-to-day -day activities? So metadata, you know, Xfil, something like that. Um, interesting thing, Slack does not pull out their metadata. If you post something in Slack, you can download it and get all their geolocation information. Fun times. Cold calling, for God's sakes, pick up a phone. Call these people. See what they're doing. Because if you can call somebody and just, uh, you know, get all the, you know, hack all the things and drink all the booze right there, then do it. Um, some of the other things that are in the second column are things that I've continued to work on, but some of the stuff works, some of the stuff doesn't. Open Face is a uh, facial recognition software that's open source. Uh, Face Finder Pro is a much better and much prettier tool. They actually offer you like $50 up front to go through and use their service because they're still trying to get out of like the post-beta testing stuff. 
The Inquisitor is a, um, it's a tool to go through and identify a lot of the corporations, a lot of company asset reconnaissance stuff. Uh, the Endorser is an amazing tool that is used with LinkedIn. So you can go through and input a LinkedIn person's name there, and it will go through and give you every connection to that person in regards to LinkedIn. So if you can use the Inquisitor to go through and get in the door, you can use the the uh, the endorser to go through and find everybody in that person's network. Um, I mean, at that point, a phishing campaign email and, you know, a Bitcoin account, you're good, right? Uh, <laughs> follow Wonk is uh, Moz.com. It goes through and shows you all the followers for all the people. Recap is a very interesting tool. Um, I don't know if anybody else knows anything about Pacer. Pacer is the, uh, the legal... It's like federal and um, maybe some state stuff for uh, court cases. So for any any intelligence information that you want to get from public information from there, PACER is something that attorneys use. Recap builds on top of that and gives you the free information that the attorneys would go through and pay for anyway. So Recap is a Chrome extension that you can go through and get. Do searches on that. Uh, also another point, you know, if you know they owe child support. Anyway, um, <laughs> Tinder face scraper. Uh, it'll go through and pull. You do have to go through and activate an account with Tinder. Um, it'll do a lot of local area stuff, but you can set Tinder to go through and do any geolocation stuff. So in con in conjunction with Tinder Face Scraper and Find Face Pro or Open Face, you can go through and do a lot of fun stuff, which maybe we'll talk about next year. Uh, Data Sploit is pretty neat. Oh, Maltigo's on there again. I'm sorry about that. I don't know why. Uh, Data Sploit is cool. Um, I have not had a ton of experience with it, but I'm, I'm playing with it. And I really like it. Uh, Thingful, has anybody else heard of the search engine? It is in beta stage right now, and it is kind of wonky, um, but it's a search engine for Internet of Things. So anything that you have that's connected to the Internet, like personal weather stations, uh, crockpots, anything else, whatever, that has Wi-Fi, uh, this will search for that stuff. And also uh, Shodan with Just Metadata. Uh, just Metadata pulls out all the information uh that is just kind of the metadata stuff. Uh, it actually has an API login with Shodan, so you can go through and do um, kind of the the physical uh, metadata stuff and the visual kind of interpretation of what that site is. Um, Shodan's a lot of fun. I've not seen it used a ton in regards to attack site stuff. It's more for just trolling and watching VIS go through and find stuff in Germany. It's really weird. Um, oh, okay. So that is some of the tools that I'm looking at here. So again, now that we have the data, what are we doing with it? Uh, again, we need to go through and protect a plan so that we can go through as a blue team group to go through and know what our tax surfaces are so we can shut that shit down. Making sure that nobody else has the ability to go through and, I'm making noise, make sure that nobody else has the ability to go through and compromise that surface there. As a red team, I, you, we've kind of talked about a lot of that. You, you have the ability to go through and do multiple, multiple pathways uh, in regards to attack vectors for that. Personal security, again, if you don't know that you're pwned, uh, it does you no good. Uh, if you stick your head in the ground and you don't know that your emails are compromised and you didn't change your password, somebody else is going to go through and use that stuff against you. It is better to know in this day and age what has happened to your information than to just let it go. Because it's going to happen. Data breaches are inevitable. We're trusting so many third parties at this point that it's not even the original vendor that you signed the agreement with. It's the third party that's bringing in all the information to go through and sell to the marketing incomes. Again, with the uh, the Home Depot thing, I don't think it was Home Depot directly that got hacked. It was a third party that took that information, however, and leaked those, what, 44 million uh, credit card information and the emails and all that. Yeah. Uh, corporate environment, same thing. You need to go through and test against your stuff. And this is not just for the blue team side. This is for your sales department, your customer service. Anybody in your R&D, making sure that you know what the other people are doing and what you are doing, what you're putting out there so that you can go through and talk intelligently in regards to what your tax service with that stuff is. And again, if anybody's ever in Kansas City, I welcome you to come to Set KC. It's our monthly meeting up there where for InfoSec and networking and drinking and all that stuff. It's awesome. So again, these are some of the people who have been doing amazing things in regards to OSINT and uh, SE stuff. Um, obviously, I forgot to go through and put, um, you know, Dave Kennedy and Human Hacker, uh, Chris had, had Nagy and all that stuff. But the Bellingcat group right there is an, uh, is, is an OSINT research group that does a lot of stuff to disprove things in North Korea, things in Syria, stuff like that. They use OSINT to go through and verify their claims. They're, they're a news organization, but they went a step up and they say they're an OSINT organization. 
Uh, like I said, for Machiavelli is a really good uh, resource. He has a Slack channel that is awesome. It's called open OSINT dot or yeah, open dot OSINT dot slack dot com. Um, you can go on his Twitter, you can go on my Twitter, you can find all the stuff anywhere. It's a it's a really good group there. Just Nordine with the OSINT framework. Uh, Josh Huff, uh, Beowulf88, does amazing work with Facebook. He's actually trying to walk it back to where he can find out by your Facebook ID, where you register your Facebook account at. So he knows if it's in the 300 block or 300,000 block that you registered at X college. He knows if it's the 400,000. If you're in the million, he knows exactly when the date and he can walk it back to go through and try to find specific instances of where and how long you've been on Facebook. Uh, Dutch OSINT guy is an amazing resource as well. He's on Facebook. Uh, Justin Sykes, like I said, does amazing work with all these amazing. I gotta find a, th a thesaurus. Uh, he does a lot with automating OSINT, Python. Um, Michael Basil uh, does a lot of stuff with privacy. Uh, Michael Hoffman, he's a SANS in, uh, instructor. Um, he does a lot with OSINT, and he also does a lot with uh, trying to remove yourself from the Internet and privacy concerns, stuff like that. So he is a really good resource. His blog's a lot of fun because he does a lot of hiking and uh, inf information security and some other stuff there. So it's kind of a mix of all three. Excuse me. I know we are running out of time. I do apologize uh, because there is too much to go through and talk about with this stuff. I thoroughly enjoy OSINT and talking about this, uh, developing tools and looking at all the other stuff. Um, there will come a time where automating the searches is going to really start helping these people go through and get more information in a quicker time frame. Matchlight is a service for personal security that will go through and monitor you personally on the dark web to make sure that if there is any in information breaches and stuff like that, if your information is sold on the deep dead, deep, dark, scary, bad web, uh, that they will inform you of it. It is a free service at the moment, and you can log into that stuff. Um, so just with the with, with the end of this talk here, because I don't think we'll have time for questions, but maybe we can talk later, uh, really ask yourself what the true cost of a data breach is for personal, for security, for your corporation. Um, how do we protect against that in the future? What are we doing to limit our tax surface? And what are we doing to help other people? Um, and what trainings are, are we willing to go through and continue to do to help those, those human elements there? So again, thank you for your time. Michael